Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's session, we're going to go ahead and continue along with our USD discussion, primarily talking about toolbars. And so toolbars are a way that within the application itself, you can execute commands. Now, there's a variety of different toolbars that you can use in USD. You can make toolbars that are specific to the application, so kind of global toolbars that can be used to access global commands and, and initiate global functionality. But at the same point in time, you can also create toolbars specific to hosted controls. And so within a hosted control, I would have the capability to have a toolbar that maybe on an account hosted control would allow me to access associated associated cases, maybe allow me to access associated contacts, and just create individualized commands that I could use to launch other functionality within the context of that session that I could go ahead and use to work with. And so that's primarily what we want to show you how to do today is to how to set up a toolbar, set it up for a specific hosted control, and then create the individual toolbar buttons that you can use to execute specific actions, as well as creating different types of toolbar buttons, maybe drop down menus, split buttons, and different things that you can use to access the functionality from an application perspective. So let's first examine this from a configuration standpoint within USD. So again, if I go to settings and unified service desk, you will see an area in here for toolbars. And when I click on toolbars, this is going to display all the toolbars that are currently enabled from an application perspective. Many of them automatically shipped as part of the USD package deployer that we use and install the application. So you can see that I have toolbars here associated with like a, the searching hosted control. I have a kind of a main toolbar that is being used for the main functionality of the application. And so when I go into this individual toolbar, and let's just start with the main toolbar so you can kind of see that from an application perspective. When I go ahead and click on main, you'll see that I have applications menu, my dashboard menu, my my work and my reminder. Um, and then I also, if I scroll over, we'll see an option in here for initiating and facilitating search. And each one of these buttons basically has a order associated with it based upon what I want to do. And so if I were to go back into USD and look at this from a USD perspective, what I can actually see in here now is here is that toolbar that I'm referring to. So here is the dashboard, here's the my work, here's the search, the reminder and then the applications and so what you're doing when you're creating these is you're defining the button and then in essence you're going to just add an action call to the button that is going to define what happens when somebody clicks on that within the context of the application and so for example if I click on search this is going to then go ahead and facilitate loading the search search hosted control now you can see within the search hosted control as we kind of talked a little bit about in the previous uh, uh, previous video that the search hosted control already has a toolbar that is specific to it. And so on this toolbar, it has toolbar buttons for the account, contacts, cases, activities, queues, so on and so forth. And so this is a toolbar that would be specific to a hosted control in the application itself. And so if I were to go ahead and go back into USD and from a configuration standpoint, if I were to go back into toolbars, and let's just open up toolbars. And this time, let's actually look at the search. What I can see is here are those items that correspond with what is been added from an application standpoint. And so each toolbar will be associated with an item. And then each one of those items will basically have a button or an item that is attached to it. And so really, you just give the toolbar a name, and then you define additional information about it. And so here, for example, is the one that is loading the account. And so when I click on account, this is what is loading the account search functionality in the application. So when I click on account, I can see that there is a button associated with it called load search account action call. And when I click on on that particular item, it will facilitate the, the, the item. And so a button is going to basically constitute, you know, the name of the button, um, the button text. And so this is what is going to be displayed when somebody looks at the button in the context of the application. Now you'll see here that it's referencing resources and accounts. Basically what this is doing is this is using localized labels to go ahead and localize the button text based upon the language packs that are installed. So it's going to look at the language that the person is using, and then it's going to render the button accordingly. Now I would have the capability if I wanted to, to just put in a button name here and I would accomplish the same type of situation when 
when I'm working through it. The other thing that you'll see in here is that there's an image option. And so if I wanted to have like, you know, a back arrow or a forward arrow, or I wanted to have some specific type of logo associated with this button, I would also have the capabilities to do that. Now, the one thing that you have to remember with images is the images have to be uploaded into CRM as web resources. So I would already have to have a web resource in the application. And then I just simply reference the web resource name as part of the image. And then I can utilize that from an application perspective. I also have the scenario where I do have the capabilities over here. You'll see from a tooltip perspective to add a tooltip for when somebody hovers over the application. Now, if you think about for those of you who have done some sitemap modifications and have done some customizing of CRM, particularly around like the command bar and, and ribbon commands from an application perspective, you're also probably familiar with the concept of enable conditions and visible conditions. And the same thing is true for toolbar buttons as well as toolbars. So I can basically write conditions that would specify when this button should be enabled in the application. And it's basically just a script that has to kind of evaluate to true. So when this particular option is true, now this button will be displayed in the application. When this particular button is false, now that will not be displayed in the application. And so this now also gives you a little bit more control over, again, presentation of the, of the items within USD. So let's just go ahead and bring this all together. So I have a custom entity that we have created in our CRM here called bank account that just kind of stores generalized bank account information. And so what I want to be able to do is via toolbar command, I would like to be able to open up the find column for the bank account scenario, much like we have seen happen within the account and the contact and, and information from the search hosted control. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a button to the search hosted control to facilitate that. So I'm going to go into toolbars. I'm going to go ahead and click on search. And so now I want to go ahead and I want to add a toolbar button to this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my add button. I'm going to define this button information. Now, again, this is just a, a, a basic button, so I'm not necessarily going to get into any localization or images or anything like that at this, uh, for purposes of this demo. So we'll just go ahead and once this loads up, I'll go ahead and give it a name. I'm going to call this bank account for my button text. I'll just call this bank account. I'm not going to worry about tool tips or anything like that. So I'll just go ahead and save my button. Now I'm going to go ahead and add an action to the button. So I'm going to click on an action call. I'm going to do a lookup. I'm going to create a new action call because again, I'm going to be on the search hosted control. So I want to associate this with the search hosted control. So I'm going to go ahead and let the action call load up. So I'm going to call this search bank accounts. I'm going to base this off of the search hosted control because that's where this is going to be originating from. The action, much like we talked about last uh, uh, last time in the last video, is going to be fine because I want to find a specific record. So I'm going to fire off the find UII action. And now the data in this is just going to be the entity that I want to work with. So in last time, we talked a little bit about using the, the account entity. In this case, I'm going to use the entity name, which is uh, going to be USD underscore bank account. Because that's what I that's the schema information that I used. So now I'm going to go ahead and save and close this. Now, in order for this change to take place, I would have to make sure that I close out a USD and reload USD. So that's what we'll do at this point. So we'll go ahead and reload USD. So now that I've reloaded USD, let's take a look at it. So now if I go into search and I click on search, I'll see that there it is. There's my bank accounts um, item that I have created. And now when I click on that toolbar icon, it's going to initiate the bank account find. So it's going to basically load the quick find view for active bank accounts. And now I could click on any one of these bank accounts, open it up. I could go into the find and you know find the information. But now I've been able to basically take a custom entity that has been created and expose it within USD using toolbars and action calls. Now, in another, the next video, we'll show you how I can have a little bit more control. So when I actually physically click on one of these items, I can actually have it create a new session in USD and utilize some of that functionality from an application perspective. But that at least gives you a starting idea in regards to how you can use toolbars in conjunction with hosted controls and action calls when working through uh, USD. 
So thanks for watching our USD toolbars video. Stay tuned to the final video in our series next week when we talk about window navigation rule. I hope you've been finding it helpful and it's been getting everybody moving forward. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek. Thanks for watching and have a good one, everybody.